Futures here. I'm looking at this bit of the camera. Let me turn that around. There we go. That's a bit better. G'day, Stu from You Me Futures here. And today, well, this is the part two of how to build a 100 mile, mile per hour FPV racing drone for like 170 bucks. If you haven't seen part one, that's where we go through this sort of step-by-step -step building process to building one of these bad boys on the bench with all the parts to show you just how easy it is. And let me tell you, this thing absolutely rips. It's a crazy performance FPV racing drone that's going to knock the socks off you when you see just how fast they can go and how good it handles. But what this video is all about, in that part one, I showed you how to build it, you know, all the nitty gritty, the soldering, that sort of stuff. This whole video, it's dedicating, showing you how easy it is to set it up on the computer. How to, first of all, we're going to bind it to our radio, set up the receiver, then we're going to plug it into our computer, program it in Betaflight, and then do a little bit of stuff in BL Heli Suite. Everything will be linked down below, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do all the software side of stuff, all the button pressing, all the keyboard mashing, all that sort of stuff that might be a little bit scary if you're like, I know how to build it, I can solder, but I don't understand it. How do I actually set it up on the computer? Well, this guide's for you. It's the part two build video of how to build an FPV racing drone for 100 miles per hour. And the massive part of the part one video, we, because we built two of these, we're giving one of these away. So I'm going to say the winner is go and check that Discord link down below because I'm going to put the winner in Discord, a special little channel where you can see if you won. So if that's you, congratulations because I'm going to be shipping one of these bad boys to you. Anyway, enough rambling here. This is for all you pilots out there. You've built your drones. You want to know how to bind it up to your radio, do it on your computer. Let's stick it on the bench and get started with this part two, I guess, build video guide or maybe a program guide. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, so we've got the drone on our bench, we've got our two little receivers, our XM Pluses, and I've also just got some of the wire that we used that was left over from our camera, but the first thing I'm going to tell everybody to do, let's take our props off, because, uh, you know, this is where it's really important, we want to be safety first, so we're going to take all the props off, and then we're going to get on with installing the receivers. Alrighty, with our props off, now what we're going to do, we're going to just take off our little top plate, so I'm going to unscrew each of these four little standoffs right here, take off our top plate, and then we can get ahead with installing our receivers. Alright, so the tops are off our build, we've got our 5S version here, our 4S version here, and even though they've got different flight controllers and ESCs, that sort of thing in here. The process is very, very similar when we're hooking up our little S bus receivers. So I'm just going to slide those to the side because this part's going to be exactly the same no matter what. So I've got my little XM Plus receiver. This is a great full size, like full range receiver, but it's micro size, super light. So it's going to be a great choice. All we're going to need to do, there's three little pads right here, which we're going to need to solder up. So we're going to zoom in and solder those up right now. So we're just going to pre-tin with a little bit of solder. Alrighty, that's looking good. Now with our leftover camera wire or just any wire that you've got, we're going to cut, I guess, three little short lengths and then we're going to solder these wires over to here. Alrighty, with that done, I'm just going to strip the ends. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're just going to tin the end of these wires, so it's going to make it soldering up very, very easy. So I'm just going to push them into my blue tack here. And the same process we used throughout our entire drone build, we're going to be doing the same thing here. So let's just put a bit of tin on the end. Alrighty, now we're ready to hook these wires up to our little receiver. Now hooking this receiver up is so simple. All we're going to do is the inside one here. This is our signal wire, so we're just going to hook up that. Then we've got our 5 volt. And then, oh, redo that. And then on the outside, this is where we've got our ground. Alrighty, so that's it. That's our receiver wired up. Now it's ready to put inside our drone. You might want to hit this with a little bit of hot glue too. That'll just give it a bit of structural integrity and stop the wires sort of snapping off in some hard crashes or lots of vibrations. Alrighty, we've wired up our receiver. Now what we've got to do three little solder joins. We're going to be putting it into our drone. We're going to do the 5S version first. I'm going to jump over, then we'll do the 4S version because look, they're pretty much the exact same process. We're going to show you how to do them both. And on this version, you can see on your flight controller, essentially what we need to do, we need to hook these up to our open UR. So on this one right here, we're going to zoom in. I'm going to show you exactly where to wire it up to. Okie dokie. So it's pretty simple stuff. These three wires just go to these three little pads right here. So our signal wire, that's going to go to where it says serial RX. Then we've got our voltage wire which is the 5 volt right here and the ground and the process is going to be almost identical to the way we put it on here we're going to go through we're going to put a little bit of solder on here first with our soldering iron then we're simply going to merge the wires and that's it your receiver is going to be installed so let's get ahead and do that now All right. 
Alrighty, so that's it. We'll hit that with a bit of hot glue and this receiver is officially installed. Now that this version's done, I'm going to quickly jump over, we'll show you the 4S version and then we can get on with hooking it up to our computer and programming it and pretty much getting it ready to go out and have some fun and fly it around. So here's my 4S version, you can see this one's a little bit different because our flight control is built into our ESC but the process is almost exactly the same. There's the three little ports instead of on the side, this one's got them at the front, so our S bus, our 5 volt and ground, that's exactly where we hook our receiver up the exact same way. So I'm going to go ahead and solder those in. Alrighty, that's it. We'll hit that with a bit of hot glue. Okie dokie, so we'll get our receivers in both of our builds. Now we've just got to put our drone back together and then we can head over and get on with the programming side of things. Alrighty, so I put the tops back on. I just want to show you guys how I mounted the receivers because, you know, you don't want them hanging out so they're going to get cut by the props. And I've got two options here. Number one, I just put my receivers down with a bit of double-sided tape. This one I put a zip tie around it so it's gone all the way around. This one I've just used a little bit more tape to hold it on securely there. So you need to think about what option you want to do for that. And then here's my two options when it comes to mounting your antennas because you want them out of the props nice and straight. So on the 4S version you can see I've run them out the back of the arms like this sort of on a 45 degree angle. And on the 5S version I've put them at the top of my quad. So either way they're not going to get cut by the props. So they're going to be nice and stiff. They're just on a bit of heat shrink. They're simply put onto some zip ties. A zip tie I zip tied around the frame, just run it up, cut it off, put the heat shrink on. So that's it. Our drone is 100% built, all soldered. You don't need to do any more of that tricky work. What we're going to do now, I'm going to go through the bind process, so how we bind it to our radio, and then we're going to jump over to the computer and uh, show you how to program it and get it all ready to rock and roll. So anyway, let's jump over and show you how to bind these bad boys. Now jumping over to the radio, the first thing we're going to take care of is we're going to actually make a new model. So I'm using my Tyrannus right here, my QX7. I'll link this down below as well. And uh, I've also linked a guide, should flash up here, somewhere about how I change the gimbals, put on the case, all that sort of stuff. But what we're going to do, we're going to go in and make a new model. So let's go down. We've got a lot of models in here, but we'll go down to this one. Let's create new model. And uh, now this is what we're going to work with. So if I just click my little page button right here, let's name it something like... Alrighty, that's done. And then there's a couple of other things we want to do. So I'm going to click page a few times because we do want to set up some other inputs we've got here. So you go down in your mixer. I want I want to add an arm switch in. So let's make channel five. Mix. Let's just doesn't really matter what you call it. We'll put A for arm. Then we're going to go down to our source. There we go. And I want it to be this switch up here. There we go. So there's that. That's our channel five. And then I'm going to put another one in here. We'll just call this one. This one will be for our mode switch or our buzzer. So there we go. Put a little M for that. Doesn't matter what you call it. And I'm going to make it this switch up here. Alrighty. So that's pretty much, that's pretty easy. And it's also important to take note. Look how these are, you know, look how these are. So we've got our throttle, aileron, aileron, rudder, and all that sort of stuff in channels one, two, three, and four. We're going to need that later on beta flight when we look at our mapping. But that's pretty much it. Now what we need to do, we need to go back a little bit so we can either cycle through or push page until we get back to the first screen, which is here. And we now we need to actually bind the thing. So I'm going to go down right here where it says bind. So we're going to click on that. So we're going to click on bind and then our radio is going to start making some little noises. So we're going to put this to the side now and jump over and look at our drone. And what I need to do, I need to take the top off this as well so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Alrighty, now this bit's really simple but sometimes a little bit tricky because you don't have enough hands. Essentially what you need to do, you need to hold down this little bind button on the back of our little receiver right there while we plug it in. So we're going to do that now. A little bit of blue tack actually is a little bit of extra support to hold that still. Alrighty, so that's looking good. We're going to push stop on our radio. So we're going to push the little exit button right here. Now I'm going to unplug my quad. I'm going to power cycle my radio, so I'm going to turn my radio off and on, plug this back in. Alright, and you can see this little green light there, that means it's bound. And then something really important too, when you want to set the fail safe, which is what we'll do at the end of the video, once we've bound it up on the computer, once we've programmed it on the computer I should say, you just press this little button here like that and you see it will flash. Now we're going to need to do that again after we've done the programming so the drone knows what we want the fail safe to do. So, 
That's it for all the bits on the bench. Now what we need to do, we're going to plug it into the computer and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to set it up in Betaflight. So let's cut over to Betaflight in 3, 2, 1. Right here, so I've got Betaflight open, ready to rock and roll. I'll put a link down below as well for where you can get this and check it out. But also make sure you install all these drivers, all this sort of stuff, because this part is really important just here to get it to work. So I've plugged my drone in. The first thing I'm going to do, we're going to click connect. And then what I want to do, we're going to reset all the settings so you guys can see exactly what we do. So look, let's click here. Warning, yes, everything's going to go back to default. And then we're ready to rock and roll. Now, a good little tip, always calibrate your accelerometer straight away. So that'll make sure the drone's going to fly a little bit better because it can come a little bit wonky when you first get it. Then we're going to jump over here, have a look at our ports. And you see everything is going to be disabled. Now, depending, we're going to be using a serial RX because we're on the Tyrannus system, the Free Sky, and it's a little uh, serial receiver. And on this particular drone, that's under UART 1. So I'm going to click that. But if yours isn't working, I would always suggest try a different UART. Sometimes on them, it's UART 3 all that sort of stuff but for this the 4s version that's what we're working on today anyway we're going to be using ur1 and then we're going to uh that's all i think we need to just click save over here so let's click save and reboot and then i'm going to connect again then we're going to go down to our configuration of this part here change this to d shot i'm going to say d shot 600 we're going to click uh then we're going to go down this is where if you want to use angle mode and that self leveling mode you can do that or I don't use it, so I'm gonna disable it there and turn that off, so that's my little accelerometer. And then scrolling down a little bit more, this is where we need to, oh, if you wanna put a craft name in, let's put our craft name in, so let's call ours the 100, this is what'll show up in your OSD, so 100 MPH, or maybe I wanna put UAV Futures. And then let's go down a little bit, this is where, because we were using a serial based receiver, so that's what we're using, that's our serial RX. We're gonna change ours, ours was S bus, cause that's what we're using if you're following along, playing at home. And then uh, you don't really need to worry about too much of this other stuff right here. All this stuff is pretty good. So uh, we're gonna now click save and reboot. Click connect again. Sorry, let's try that again. Click connect again. Then uh, we're gonna jump over in our PID tuning. This is where I've actually got some different PIDs that we're gonna flash on the screen right here. So the PIDs actually are, we're gonna type these in. And this is just gonna make it fly a little bit smoother. So we've got 20, 35, 35, and 40. And then for I, we're gonna put in 40, 55, oh, 55. And then for the rates, I guess for the super rate, we're not gonna mess with the RC rates. My, we're gonna have 0 0.78, 0 0.78, and 0 0.75. So that's what I like, and that's how fast it sort of turns, you can see. If you want your rates a little bit slower and a little bit more docile, just put these numbers. That's going to tell you how responsive it is on the sticks. Let's click save and reboot right there. Oh, just save actually on this one. Then we can jump over, have a look at our receiver page. And this is where it was really important to pick. The, I'm going to pick this one so it matches on our channel mapping. Remember when we did it on our radio? So we have T-A-E-R, that matches up. Everything's looking pretty good. So we're going to click save right there. And then in the modes, I'm just going to add a little bit to arm it. So we're going to put that, I'm going to, that means if I flick my switch, it's going to jump up here and arm it. So that's going to be auxiliary one. And this is also where you can do things like your beeper and your angle mode, all that sort of stuff. But luckily, I don't fly around with any of that. Mine's all in air mode. So we'll put that in or acro mode as some people like to call it. So we're going to save. And then that's pretty much it. We're ready to rock and roll. So if we click over here on your motors, that's where you can check the going the right way and all that sort of stuff. Here we can mess with our OSD a little bit and I do recommend turning off some of this stuff. So we're gonna get rid of these sidebars, artificial horizon. I do want my main battery voltage and I'm gonna turn off that bit, turn off my flight time and turn off my flight mode and that's pretty much it. You're ready to rock and roll. I might also put on my craft name so you know we can see where it is and you can drag this around on the screen as well. So wherever sort of works for you. Now I'm going to click save. And then I guess one final thing, we'll click on receiver. I'm going to actually plug it in now. So I'm going to plug my drone in, turn my radio on, and we should see these sticks moving right here. Alrighty, so it's plugged in. You can see, uh, well, I'm moving my throttle. Everything's working. This is a great way to check how it's going. You know, so when I move my throttle, the throttle should be moving. When I do my pitch and roll, you know, those things should be moving. And then, like I mentioned, this was the arm switch that we set before. So if I flick that, and you'll also hear the motors spinning up in the background. So you guys can see that. And then this was my other one as well. So auxiliary two, that was that other, I guess it was on channel six in the mixer. 
that we made. So you can set that to whatever you like. So that's it. Our quad is ready to rock and roll, all set up, super easy. Now the only other thing I would recommend is when your quad is in this position, so the arm switch is all the way down, the throttle is all the way down as well. This is when you want to push that little fail safe button on the top uh, of, on the top of our receiver so it flashes. And that means if you ever lose radio contact, your quad, it's not going to disappear. It's just going to drop out of the sky and you can go pick it up. But pretty much that's how easy it is to get everything ready to rock and roll, bind it up, do it all in beta flight. Super, super easy. Now, the only other bit we really need to touch on, this is the BL Heli Suite, and this all regards to our ESCs, all that sort of stuff, and we talked about it in the part one review, and uh, part one vid build video, I should say, and this part, you need to plug your battery in, and this is how we're going to change our ESC direction or your motor direction if you need to, you know, if you didn't want to do it by wiring it up differently. So make sure your battery is plugged in, click connect, and then you can see just on the drop down, each one for the ESC, you can click either reverse or normal, and then you click right setup to uh, make it, I guess, sort of right to the ESC. Now, I'm not going to do it because I've already done that and mine is spinning the right way and then unplug your battery and then you just click disconnect Alrighty, so there it is there was my part two sort of build guide. well not a build guide but i guess programming guide my part two guide on how to build the 100 mile per hour fpv racing drone remember if you're interested in it go and check that part one and i'm going to say for everybody out there too you might have built a different drone and hopefully this helps you out you know it's the same binding procedure if you've got your Tyrannus and those sorts of things and your xm plus receivers it's going to be the same on beta flight for a lot of people it doesn't matter if you have the exact same components and also hooking your up hooking your ESCs up to the BL Heli Suite, it's all the same. So whether you have this exact sort of drone or maybe one that's similar, hopefully this helps a lot of you guys out there. Subscribe for more FPV related content. Go and check that Discord server because that's where the winner is. So if you commented in the part one, go and see if you were the lucky winner for that. For everybody else, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying! Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.